Hi everyone, this is Mohit and welcome to our YouTube channel. This is another video in the Google Cloud Platform series. In this video, we are going to talk about a few most important services in Google Cloud. The first one is the Cloud Composer and the second one is the Data Proc. We are going to see how we can use Cloud Composer with Data Proc to automate our data engineering pipelines. Data Proc is one of the most important service in Google Cloud. Data Proc is used to run a Spark application on Google Cloud. One of the major challenges that we face while running a Spark application is that we have to first create a cluster. We have to keep that cluster running so that we can schedule our PySpark jobs. This incurs a lot of cost. To avoid that, there are alternate ways possible. We can use Composer to create the cluster first and then execute a Spark job. And once the job is completed, we can shut down the cluster. So we are going to see how we can achieve that. Let's look into the composer. We can see that we have three different tasks. One is to create the data proc cluster. Second one is to run the data proc spark job. And the third one is to delete the data proc cluster. Let's go and see how this DAG is created. Let me open the Python file. We can see that we have to import a few libraries from Google Cloud Operator for data proc. So I have uh, imported data proc create cluster operator, submit PySpark job operator, and the delete cluster operator. Let's go ahead and see how we can use these operators to create the data proc cluster, run the Spark job, and then delete the cluster. So the first one is the create cluster operator. In the create cluster operator, we have to pass on the cluster config. We can pass the master config where we can give the number of instances. In this case, the number of instances is 1 and the machine type is N2 standard 2. If your uh, job is pretty heavy, then you can use the cluster with the higher configuration. Similarly, for the worker, I have only given two instances for now. The machine type again over here is standard 2. And uh, if uh, your job is pretty heavy, like I have mentioned, you can use the cluster with the higher configurations. We have to pass on the region. I have passed on the Asia South one region, the cluster name. Cluster name will be the name of the cluster that is getting created. And the project ID, that is where you want to create this particular cluster. So I have given the project ID as extreme course 404805. This particular task will create the data proc cluster. The second task is submitting this PySpark job. So data proc submit PySpark job operator is used for this purpose. In this particular operator, we have to define a few parameters like project ID, region, main, where we can pass on the Python script, which is used to execute a PySpark job. So whenever you are going to use BigQuery with Spark, you need a Spark BigQuery jar. There are additional arguments that you can pass, like I have mentioned app name and the layer. So app name is the app name that is given to the Spark application. In this case, it is raw to refined app and the layer basically is the parameter that is taken by the PySpark script. This particular operator is going to submit a PySpark job in the cluster that is created. Finally, once the job is completed, we are going to use data proc delete cluster operator. This particular operator is going to delete the cluster. We have to pass on a few parameters like the cluster name, region and the trigger rule. Trigger rule is used to specify when you want to run this particular task. So I am saying that I want to run it when all the upstream tasks are completed. Finally, there is a dummy operator which is used to represent that the flow is completed. So this is how our DAG will run. It will first create the cluster. It will then submit the PySpark job. And finally, it will delete the cluster. Let's go ahead and see the overview of our PySpark script. So we can see that there is a PySpark script which accepts two arguments. The first one is the app name and the second one is the layer. The layer operator is used to identify which particular workflow is to be triggered. Raw to refined meaning that the data that is present in the raw layer will be populated to the refined layer. And in the refined to integrated, we are going to join multiple tables in the refined layer. And finally, we are going to populate the integrated layer. This particular DAG is going to run the raw to refine workflow. 
let's go and see how it looks like we have defined two configurations one for raw to refine and the other for refine to integrated in the raw to refine configuration we have defined movies data set where input is the gcs location and the output is the bigquery table we are going to transform our data set for the raw to refine job we are going to call the raw to refine flow where we are going to read the data from the gcs location using the extract method once that we have read this particular data we are going to filter only the genres which are adventure and finally we are going to drop a column named genres once this is done we are going to finally load the data set into the bigquery table so in our case since the output type is bigquery we are going to use this part of the code to run our job once we have completed this script we are going to place these files in the gcs bucket so if we go to gcs bucket we can see there is a bucket called as gs code where i have placed my main file so we can see that there is a main.py which contains the pyspark code in the lib i have placed this spark bigquery jar there is another bucket for uh, composer in this bucket we are going to place all the DAGs. So this is the DAG that I have placed over here which will be used to execute a PySpark job. Let's go ahead and see how the DAG looks like. In the DAG we can see that there is a start task which represents that the DAG is now started. Once the DAG starts we are going to create the data proc cluster. Once the data proc cluster is created we are going to run our Spark job. Finally we are going to delete the cluster and the end task represents that the DAG is now completed. So let's go ahead and start this particular DAG. I have triggered this DAG. The create data proc cluster task is now started and we can go and see in the data proc that there is a new cluster that is getting created. If I uh, see over here, we can see that the cluster currently is in the provisioning state. Once the cluster is provisioned, the next task which is running the data proc spark job will get triggered. I'll wait for some time for the cluster to get created and then we'll resume. We can now see that the cluster is now in the running state. So let's go ahead and see whether a spark job is now getting submitted. We can see here that now the run data proc spy spark job is getting triggered. It will uh, get completed in about a minute. So let's wait till the job is getting completed. We can also see the status of the job using uh, data proc resource. If we go to over here, we can see that the job is now succeeded. Let's go ahead and see if the data proc delete cluster job is not triggered. Not delete data proc cluster job is triggered. This will delete the data proc cluster over here. So if you can see the status is currently deleting, it has deleted the data proc cluster. So this is how we can use Cloud Composer to schedule our PySpark job, which will first create the data proc cluster. Once the cluster is created, it is going to run our PySpark job. Afterwards, it is going to delete the data proc cluster. Finally, it is going to end the flow. I hope you find this video useful. For more such content, Please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.